So Shauna, I'm going to unmute you. Um, so Shauna is one of my sweet girls on my team, and I asked her to share her testimony with you guys. Um, you know, we didn't do testimonies last week, mainly because my mind was going crazy getting back on our first training call in a while, and so I did not prepare. Um, but this week, we do have a couple people sharing, and so I'm going to ask them to do that to start us off. So Shauna, you should be unmuted, and you can go ahead. Okay, hey guys, um, my name is Shauna Weir. I just wanted to share my plexus testimony with you. Um, I take the triplex, and really I never knew how much it was gonna change my life. I was in a car accident three years ago. It was actually a head-on collision. Uh, pretty serious car accident. I had several injuries, um, whiplash, broken bones, ended up developing fibromyalgia, just not anything fun. <laughs> I literally could just barely, barely like tap my hand, um, even accidentally just walking down the hallway and maybe bump it on the wall or something. And it would feel as if my hand was on fire and like I had broken it or something. It would be that bad. Um, this was a case for any body part. I couldn't work out um, without injuring myself or just being in pure pain and trying to work out, period. To make a long story short, I found Plexus through a friend and gave it a shot, and now I can work out without pain, and I actually do um, body pump classes and boot camp style classes. Um, it's even cleared up my rosacea, which is a huge plus for me. I put it to the test even, and I stopped it, and I stopped Plexus altogether, and I found out um, that was pretty crazy of me to do, and it's just helped me that much, and it's it's a must for my fibro and just being able to work out and feel like myself again and I just I love Flexus. It's it's a must for me. Awesome. Okay, is there anything else? I just, I don't want to cut you off. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> You're like, please, I'm done. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remute you then, and um, Amanda is going to share next. So, Amanda, I'm going to unmute you. Hang on. Okay, girl, you should be good. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I don't know where to begin. I was a little unprepared, and I don't mean to sound like a train wreck, um, but I'm just going to be 35 in May. And I have battled with a lot of things in my life. And forgive me if I tear up a little bit. I just want to say first a shout out to Tanya for my sister-in-law right there underneath me <laughs> giving me this gift. Um, I can't begin to say uh, besides my health and my faith have been strengthened, um, my family is healthier. My mom, my husband, and myself. Um, but I can't begin to say when I actually started to have anxiety. Um, I've had it my whole life. I think even a little bit of social anxiety disorder. Um, I have had KP, which is a skin issue that some people may have. Um, and ADD, as long as I can remember, and then first diagnosed in eighth grade. Acid reflux and hiatal hernia shortly after depression diagnosed as of age 19. I never had a regular menstrual cycle until pretty much I am about a few months before my son. And then um, now because of plexus, um, constant continual bloating and irregularity. And that started in my 20s. Um, and basically, um, God bless her. Uh, she would have been 43 yesterday. Um, we lost a friend to colon cancer um, several years ago, and she begged me to do something about my health. She had the same symptoms as I did, and I was petrified. So she begged me to do something, and that's what started my journey, even on a, um, on a stronger um, type of, um, I don't know, a path. So I did that and I looked for anything holistic, natural, because I was taking Paxil and Zoloft and Adderall and Depahydramine for insomnia. And, you know, I was taking contraceptives to regular my, 
you know, make my periods regular, you know, and at 22, I was diagnosed with precancerous cells. You know, I was getting all these awful things on top of, you know, bowel issues. So I was just at my wit's end and I was starting to feel even more tired and the depohydramine, which they say is not addictive. Um, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was on it for almost three years and I started to get the adverse effects. So fast forward here um, with all my research I had done and I was getting sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and not being a parent to my new little boy. So Tanya came in and she was on this awesome thing and she said she was going to come to me with these products that I was like, okay. I've been always battling with my weight. I've always battled with depression and anxiety and, you know, but then she started naming off these things that I had researched about and it just kind of clicked. So she gave me a week's worth of the pink drink and I was like, okay. So that morning I actually took a selfie, which is so weird. I never do that. Never. I'm not a vain person and I, I still kind of think that's silly, but I do it now. Um, I haven't touched Adderall, Zoloft, Paxil, birth control, or have continued with a regular depohydramine. Um, it was like I said, I couldn't do it anymore. I actually started to feel, you know, the odd adverse effects. Um, so I don't have as many KP um, flare-ups. My eyelashes are longer. My nails are healthier. My hair is healthier. I'm happier. I'm not what my husband would call, you know, that, that weak of uh, us womanhood <laughs> and um, having my moods. Also, um, I've, um, within that time, I started up on March 17th for that half price ambassadorship and I haven't looked back. Now I'm taking Triplex and my husband is on Mega X and he's less stressed. He drives a concrete truck and he's not as anxious and he's on a health kick now. He's starting to see the money roll in a little more and he's taking the probiotic and you know, guys, he already lost three inches around his waist. I could just strangle him. <laughs> um, and my mom has lost, I don't know how many pounds, but she's also um, within three months, she's went down one whole point on her diet, but um, HGA1C. And she knows she's lost inches, and she's not as in much pain. And to add to that, I'm more active than I was last year, and I was fighting through my pain. Um, and I actually am considering doing a 5K this year, which I never thought I was a jogger. With my hiatal hernia and all my other issues, I never thought. So I have no longer, when I do these multiple jumping jacks, um, no more arch pain, no more as much knee pain. My neck pain is cut down because um, I was also in two pretty bad car accidents. Um, but, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I don't know if I missed anything, but it, as corny as it sounds, Lex has changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not corny. I mean, I love that. I have never heard your story. That's crazy, girl. I mean – so this, this guy, hold on, I'm going to mute you again, sweet pea. Um, hold on, mute, not video. Let me mute your audio. Um, so, I mean, this, uh, those of you who have done this for a while, I mean, we know this is why we do it. It, there are so many people I, in the beginning was terrified to share about this, but it was reading through those stories of, you know, crazy testimonies that don't even sound like real people. And it was reading through that, that kind of opened my eyes to, like I felt like it was selfish of me not to share it with people that I knew struggled with stuff because I know what I went through and I know I was in and out of hospitals. I couldn't function as a mother or a wife because I was in so much pain. And I knew my cousin who's incredibly shy and has anxiety and introverted. She took a chance and started sharing it, shared it with me. It changed my life. And so I needed to take that chance and help my friends. Um, the business is a huge financial blessing being a stay at home mom and having a full time income. I never ever could have imagined that that would happen. But you know, these stories that we see, they're real people and you know, they are life. This has been life changing for so many people. And so, um, 
that's what I focus on when I do it. And I've got some of that in my notes, so I can't go too much into it or I'll get ahead of myself. Um, but so this week I was really trying to think of what am I going to talk on this week? Um, you know, we've started doing these weekly and so now I have to actually come up with things to, to, um, talk about. And this kept, this one word kept popping into my head and the word is intentional. Okay. Um, it was really weird. And you know, I, I was, trying to think about how on earth this word could apply to our business. And I just started having all these things coming to my mind. And so I'm going to talk about how we can be more intentional with our business. And um, hopefully by the time I'm done, it makes a little bit more sense. So the first thing is our posting. Um, whether you've done it for a while or you are new to this, sharing testimonies on Facebook is crucial to this business and your success with it. Okay. Um, it is one of the main ways that you're going to grow your business. And, um, it's one of the main ways that you're going to expose people to what our products do and the fact that you are able to provide it for them. But how we do this is just as important as the fact that you do it. Okay. Um, so, so being intentional with your posting first and foremost, no ads, no advertisements. Um, before I kind of go into that topic, if you're somebody and you feel like you advertise, I mean, I'm not thinking of anybody in particular, so please don't feel like I'm pointing a finger at you. I have done it as well. Okay. But it's really important. So I want to make sure that we go over that. Um, one of the ways that Plexus is different from all those other companies out there is our products sell themselves. We don't have to sell them. They really sell themselves. Um, and the second that you go from sharing with your friends to selling to your friends, you're going to put this wall up and your friends aren't going to listen to you now whenever you share with them about Plexus because they're going to feel like you just want their paycheck and that's not what we want. Okay. So, you know, I see people off my team on my team, you know, there's a lot of people that do this um, and we share graphics that look like ads and you know, we love them. There's tons of cute ones out there. I have shared many of them. But the problem that happens when we share these is it, it turns our Plexus post into an advertisement for our friend. And people were advertised to and were sold to all day long. People are not interested in that. And so um, if you do find one that you feel like it's important to share, you need to be super intentional about personalizing the post that you do alongside it. Okay. So the post is like, if you have your graphic, it's the words that go above the graphic. Um, you know, if you're copying and pasting somebody else's verbiage, then it's not going to be a personal post and it's not going to sound like you, you know, even when you're writing, your friends know your personality, they know what you sound like. And if your post doesn't sound like you, it's going to come across as an advertisement and you do not want that. Um, so you need, I would say, at least 90% of your Plexus post to not be ads, okay? So you need them to be your personal experience. Um, that is going to work for you better than anything else. If you have a great night's sleep and that's different for you, post about that. If you're out of pain or you're not getting a headache for the first time or you noticed um, you know, that you're resisting cookies and that's totally foreign for you, share that. It's those little things. You don't have to have some gigantic testimony in order to share this with people because your testimony is never going to apply to everything that your friends struggle with. Okay. We all deal with different stuff, but you never know if it's going to be that one thing. Um, if you got a great night's sleep and you got a tired mom friend who that speaks to her. So your personal experiences, um, testimonies. It's really important that we are sharing testimonies from others because that kind of helps educate people on what our products can help people with. And articles educating people on why they need specific ingredients in our products. Okay. Those I try to be intentional about. We do need to educate people. Um, but things like this are what you should be focusing on on sharing on Facebook most of the time, because this is what's going to benefit you and help educate your friends and help them to see that you're not, you know, just posting this because you want a paycheck. You're posting it because you believe in it and you're, you hope that it can help them. Okay. So 
I want us to really focus on sharing and not selling and being intentional and thinking about every single post that we make. All it takes is one post done the wrong way to turn people off from either Plexus or you. Maybe they know multiple people selling and they're now going to go to somebody else because they feel like you're selling to them. Um, so I just want all of us to really, really carefully think about stuff that we're sharing. Um, another way that you can be really intentional with your posting is paying attention um, sorry, I think someone came on. Hold on, let me remute. Ah, how do I do this now? Oh, there we go. Sorry, as new people come on, remuting. Okay. Um, so another way that we can be super intentional with our posting is pay attention to your friends and the things that they are saying and struggling with. If you have a friend that is dealing with headaches, guess what you should be sharing testimonies about? Headaches, okay? Um, and there, if you go to Facebook, and up in the top, if you're looking at your Facebook on your computer, and in the top left where it has the Facebook search bar, you can do a keyword search in there. So if I have a friend with headaches, I will go up to that and I'll type in the words, Plexus migraines. And I will search that. And of all the testimony pages that I am a part of, it will pull up any testimony that has those words in it. So, and these are all testimonies that you are allowed to share onto your personal page. Now, one thing I do want to make sure to point out is you cannot say, um, like when you share your this testimony, you cannot say, anybody who has migraines should read this. Um, we can't say that because that is us now making a medical claim. We have to let the testimony speak for itself. So just make sure you're careful about that. Um, but, you know, gear the stuff that you share to what you know your friends struggle with. If you have a friend who's a diabetic, or you have a friend who you know is addicted to chocolate, or a friend who has an autoimmune disorder, um, make sure that you are sharing that stuff because those are the people that you know that could really benefit from this. And so that's another way that you can be really intentional with your posting. Um, another way really I touched on a little bit is educate people. Some people have to be convinced that they need this. They think they don't and you really have to convince them that they do. And so I love posting articles about stuff. As I'm learning, if I come across something that talks about, um, you know, gut issues and thyroid problems, and it kind of links those two together, that's something I'm now going to share on my Facebook page because I didn't know that there was that connection before. And so I know my friends more than likely don't know that. And so that helps to educate them why if you've got one thing, maybe you need to treat something else in your body that's the root issue of that in order to start improving this other thing going on in your system. So um, that's, you know, all of this kind of goes back to just intentional posting of making sure you're thinking through this. And especially those of you who have done this for a while, myself included, we know, okay, we've got a certain number of Plexus posts that we want to do every day. So I'm going to go to the testimony pages and I'm going to copy and paste them and schedule them all out so that, you know, my posting's done for the week. And, and I try to be quick and I try to, you know, really make sure I'm saving time and being productive. And I just kind of get in that robot mode and don't think about the stuff that I'm sharing. Um, but if I have my list of people and I'm thinking, okay, I really want to try to reach out to these three people at the end of the week. I know that they struggle with this stuff. So I'm going to make sure I'm sharing about that stuff this week because now it's on their mind. And so it's going to make it a lot easier if you kind of set up that groundwork for yourself. And so, um, so that's kind of the posting. The next thing is really being intentional with the way that you're reaching out to people. Okay. So I talk a lot about making your list of people and going down that list and reaching out to people daily. Um, but you have to do this the right way. So the first thing is, especially for people who are new, I know it's very intimidating to think that you need to reach out to people. We, um, Posting on Facebook, as scary as that seems, that seems like a nice little comfort zone when it compares to reaching out to others about Plexus. But you have to, okay? Your business will grow if you just post on Facebook, but it's not going to grow very fast. And um, if you're not telling your friends about this or your family about this, somebody else is going to. If you think about that whole, this thing is like six degrees of separation. We all know 
you know, pretty much the same people. And you're probably not the only person that they know who does Plexus. And if you don't reach out to that person, their other Plexus friend is probably going to. So this is something I encourage you guys to push yourself to do. And it's hard for me as well. It's something I still struggle with. And there are certain people that terrify me more than others. <laughs> um, we all have those people in our lives. But really, really push yourself to do, to do this, okay? So one way that you can do this is private messaging and um, private messaging, whether it's email or Facebook messenger. And you can first just message people and don't even bring up Plexus. Okay. Just start renewing relationships and reconnecting with people. Um, say you have a bunch of old high school friends on your Facebook. You can just start like message them. Hey, I saw you post those pictures of your kids the other day. Wow. They are so adorable. I cannot believe how long it's been since we talked to each other. What is going on with your life? Where are you? Um, you know, something as simple as that will start getting that conversation flowing, ask them questions about them. And that leads into them asking you about you. And that's kind of your opening. Okay. Um, if you do message them about Plexus, be genuine. So I have an example here of something that I might send to somebody. Um, you know, if they're brand new, I've never talked to them about Plexus, then this is, you know, kind of a guideline. Please don't do this word for word if you write really fast, okay? You want to personalize it. But I said, hey, Sarah, I know that you've probably seen all the stuff I've been posting, and, you know, maybe this is not for you. That's totally fine. But I wanted to send you a message just in case. Um, I've started Plexus because I have really bad IBS, like to the extreme, and I had zero energy, although I think my four kids waking me up every night, I can think for that. But I really just wanted to do something natural to help, and this has done that in a huge way. I feel so much better. Um, my IBS is under control. Psycho mommy, as my husband calls it, is gone. And I've lost a good amount of weight. There are so many people um, or so many things that these products have helped people with. So I'm trying to get the word out there about them in case somebody is struggling with stuff like I was. Please don't feel like I'm soliciting a paycheck here. I really just want those that need these products to learn about them. They help with blood sugar regulation, gut issues, inflammation, chronic pain, weight loss, headaches, hormonal issues, and a lot of other things. They aren't like those other things out there that just put a Band-Aid on what's going on in your body. These really address the root issues, and I think that's why I love them so much. Please let me know if this is something you might like to try or even if you know somebody that could benefit from it. I'd love to send you a sample either way, so shoot me your address. I really hope you guys are doing well, and I love watching your kiddos grow on Facebook. It's crazy how much time has passed since high school. Um, so that's an example of what I would send to somebody just to kind of start the conversation. Um, it's not uncommon at all for people to ignore you. You know, we all see that little timestamp in the bottom, and so we know they've read our post and they still ignore us. That happens. Don't let it hurt your feelings. You still need to have that person on your list. If somebody, guess what, next month, you can reach out to them again. You've already messaged them about Plexus. Hey, I know I told you a little bit about this last month. Um, I just wanted to let you know I'm running a special this month. And so um, if it's something you've thought about, then I'd love to chat about it. Because this is somebody who has seen you consistently posting that whole month. And so now maybe they know more about Plexus. And maybe this is the, the time that they tell you, yeah, I am ready for that. As far as samples, I know some people are not a fan of handing out samples. I am a fan. I really feel like my first year, 80% of my business came from samples. There is something about being able to try it before you spend your money on it. Um, you know, the excitement that it builds of starting something and then you don't want to stop it because, you know, a lot of people do notice something in just three days. Some people don't, some people do. And so... I do encourage you to do that. If it's not something you've thought about, think about it, okay? Um, it's Most people that have joined my team or I have given a sample to. Another thing in messages, offer, uh, offer specials, okay? So this kind of gives you an opening to message either new people or follow up with old people. And um, so if you have somebody that, that had told you no in the past, I never consider those absolute no's. I consider them for now no's then here's an example of something that you could send to them. So we have Sarah again, which my friend Sarah is on here. Um, 
Hey, Sarah, I just wanted to let you know that I'm paying the sign-up fee this month for anyone that wants to try Plexus at the wholesale rate. That would save you about $35, plus you would get all the products 20% off of the retail rate. If it's not for you, no worries. I just wanted to throw that out there. If you can't tell, I really love these products. Just let me know if you're interested. And I leave it at that. Um, I know that running specials can freak people out because we feel like we're about to invest a lot of money in this. But one thing to remember is we get welcome pack bonuses, okay? Um, and if you haven't gone through the compensation plan to see what that is, basically when somebody signs up, they have the option of the $100 welcome pack or the $200 welcome pack. If they get the $100 welcome pack, we get a $25 bonus. Um, if they get the $200 one, we get a $50 bonus, okay? And I always encourage people to get the double triplex welcome pack, that's the bigger one, because they save like $60 off of it. So it's, it's the best deal. But with these bonuses that we get, running specials is not a financial burden on us because you get that money back the very next week. And so it's something just to think about. My cousin was running that special when I signed up. And so I ran that special my first month and I added like 22 people. So really consider it. It's a great thing to be able to offer people, especially fence sitters to kind of get them off the um, fence. And the last way as far as messaging is provide new information when you are messaging somebody um, after the first time. Okay, so if this is a follow-up or reaching out to somebody again. Um, if you've already talked to them about Plexus, then you know you can send them a message. Here's obviously I'm liking examples tonight. Here's another example. Um, hey, I know it's been a bit since we've chatted about Plexus, but I thought of you when I saw this, so I wanted to send it your way. I'd love to get you started. Just let me know. And then you can either attach a testimony, like if you're if it's your friend who you know struggles with headaches, then find a, a testimony specific to that and let them know. I thought about you. I know you struggle with this. You should read this. I think you should try it. Um, you know, there's video testimonies on YouTube. That's a great source of video testimonies. And I love the video testimonies because you can hear their passion. You can hear why it has changed their life. Um, another great thing is sending them web articles. If you have a friend who has autoimmune disorders and you're coming across stuff that talks about gut health and how it's becoming linked to autoimmune disorders, send them that. Like, hey, I know you struggle with this stuff. I thought of you when I read it. Um, you know, these are all great things to send to somebody in a message. And it's just kind of a way of planting more seeds. Um, most people, it's, it's not going to be the first time that you talk to them that they decide to give this a shot. It's generally the fifth. I, I want to say the statistic was like 85% of people decide to do this between the fifth and 12th time that you reach out to them. So having their names written down on lists and having a plan of how you're going to continue to share with them. Because the first time you reach out to them, we know they need the products. That's why we're reaching out to them. But it might take you five times of reaching out to them for them to know that they need the products. So, you know, don't take somebody off your list just because they either ignore you or they tell you no. It's not a real no. Okay, I have many no's on my team now. Um, so just send them anything that helps give them more information. So that's how you can be intentional about reaching out to people through messaging, okay? There's texting. Um, texting is a more personal way to reach out, even though saying texting is personal sounds weird. Um, but in our day and age, texting is more personal. If you have somebody's number, you can either call them or text them. Um, if they're local, try to go to dinner with them or go get coffee with them. You want to get, you know, that helps you when you're face to face with somebody. Um, you can work on that relationship more, which this is relationship marketing. Uh, you know, it's about relationships with people. That's why they buy from us. They trust us. We're their friend. And so get face to face with them. Ask them about their life and then you can share about your life. Okay. And again, that's a way that you can bring up Plexus. So do whatever it takes as far, you know, if you have to go get coffee, if they're not local, obviously you can't do that. But a phone call, um, you know, just any way that you're comfortable doing it, but do push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone. So even those of you who have been doing this for a while, um, you know, really focusing on how we're messaging people and making sure we're not doing what I used to do, okay? I'm not just speaking to y'all. I used to have my copy and paste to everybody because I thought, oh, I wrote this out. It sounds great. I can just send this to everybody. But I want to make sure that I am trying to think of people more from 
this is my friend, this is what they need. Um, and, you know, I want to make sure that I am helping them see that they need this as well. So, um, you know, that takes a little more personalization. Hopefully I'm not totally talking circles around this and confusion, confusing you guys. So the next thing is being intentional about our follow-ups, okay? So you've posted, you've reached out to people, you have to now follow up with these people. And this is kind of what we talked about a little bit with the, the five to 12 times you reach out. Um, you have to be consistent with this. If you're not consistent with following up, people are gonna drop off. Um, you follow up with potentials, you follow up with existing customers, and you follow up with ambassadors that are on your team. So I am about to completely revamp the way that I'm doing this. I feel like this is one of the most crucial things just where I'm at in my business. And so it's something um, that I need to work on. And for those of you who have done it longer, this is something, you know, I really want you guys to start prioritizing. So the first reason, so say your existing customers are your ambassadors. You follow up because if something's going wrong, with their products, you want to make sure that you are there to troubleshoot before they get frustrated. Um, these products work so differently for everybody. Some person, you know, if somebody's taking the bio cleanse at night, like I, most people I have take it at night and, and I'm not asking them how it's going. I might not realize this person is now struggling to go to sleep at night. Most people don't have a problem taking the BioCleanse at night. Some people, they're more sensitive to the magnesium, and they can't go to sleep if they take it at night. So that person, I need to tell to move it during the day. And if they move it during the day, they're now in love with these products again. But if I don't follow up with them and they continue to take it at night, they're now somebody who thinks that these products are giving them insomnia. Okay? So you've got to be following up with customers and ambassadors who are taking it to make sure first and foremost that it's working for them and that they're taking it the right way. Um, if they're a customer of yours and they're absolutely loving it, then now's the time to talk to them about the wholesale route, okay? Somebody should only be a customer if they don't know yet, if they love it and they wanna keep that 60 day money back guarantee, okay? If they know that they like it, they need to get the discount, become a wholesale ambassador, and guess what? Now they have a website and when they're telling their mom or their coworker or their friend that they like it, they are now set up to start working the business. So, you know, staying on top of those customers will help you know first if it's going wrong, you know, I think a lot of us feel like I don't want to reach out to them because if it's going wrong and I check on them, they're going to quit. But if I don't talk to them, maybe they'll keep ordering. Like I've been there, okay? Um you know, we don't want to get into drama, so we're nervous to check in on them. But for all you know, it could be going great, and they're your next rock star ambassador. Or if it's going bad, it could be one tiny little thing that you need to change for them, and now they love it again. Um, and so, so really make sure that you're focusing on that. Set alarms on your phone. So this is what I've been doing lately. If I talk to somebody about it and I check in with them, I now, as soon as I get off the phone with them, which I try to do a lot of my check-ins on the phone because I want to know how somebody's doing and kind of have conversation outside of Plexus. Um, but if it needs to be via message or if life's crazy, it's better to do that than to not check in on them at all. But when I get off the phone with them, I put their name in my phone, in my calendar, and I set an alarm for either like one week or two weeks, depending on the person, and like reminding me to check in on them because, you know, checking in can be really fast. And so that alarm just kind of helps keep them in my mind. Um, another thing that we, I've been trying to start on my team page is follow up Friday. We learned about that at super Saturday. Um, I say we learned about that as if it's like super profound. It makes total sense. I love it. Um, just spend Friday, like no on Friday. That's the day that you're checking in on people. Um, and so put it on your calendar or set aside an hour on Friday or 30 minutes, depending on, you know, however many people you have and just reach out to all of them. And that way you know that you're checking in with them weekly and it all happens at once and the rest of the week you don't have to think about it. So just make a plan for follow-up, okay? Um, and write out the names of people. I've, I've talked about the list over and over and over because the longer you go with this, the harder it's going to get to keep track of who you need to check in on. Okay, trust me. Um, you need to have a written list. Also, I mean, it also is a time saver because when you sit down – and you know you have ambassadors and you have customers that you need to check on. And you sit down. If you don't have a written list with their names already next to your computer, 
you now have to go to your back office and you have to go to your genealogy report or you have to go to your customer log just to try to remember who you even need to check on. And if you know in your mind you're going to have to go through that whole process of going to your back office to check on somebody, it's going to make you procrastinate and you're just not going to do it. So it's going to make you bad at follow up. Um, you know, and, and people go for the customer service experience with this. They know, uh, you know, they've ordered from their friend and they expect their friend to be checking on them. So you don't want to be bad about follow up. So literally keep a notebook with these people with these people next to your computer so that you can just sit down and know right what you're going to be doing instead of having to kind of dig for them. Um, so all of this is being intentional with your follow up. Okay, we've got to do this. So the next thing is goal setting. And I don't have a whole lot for this, but goal setting is huge. Okay. So the first thing if you're newer, I mean, even if you've been doing this for a while, figure out why you're doing this, find your why. Okay. If it is your family, why? Why are you doing this for your family? Is it because, um, you know, your husband works two jobs and you don't want him to, ha him to have to work as hard? Um, you know, if it's for your kids, do you want them to be able to go to summer camp? Um, you know, is it so that they can do extra sports or the lesson that they wanted to do? Is it because you have a lot of sick friends and you just really want them to, to feel better? You need to find the why that makes you cry, okay? And it sounds totally corny, and the first time I heard it, I, it sounded corny to me. But if you keep asking yourself questions, going deeper and in, in deeper into why you're doing this, you're going to find that why that makes you cry. Um, my why has changed so much over the two and a half years that I've been doing this. It really has. Um, you know, sometimes it's that one friend that finally – has their health back and they've been struggling with so much like, you know, I'm not get even choked up talking about it. Uh, you know, but like seeing people's lives transformed by this, it, there's nothing that compares to that. So that is an incredible why for me, my family, I've been home for 11 years now and we have struggled so much financially. Um, you know, and we would have lost our house if Plexus didn't come along. And I now provide a great income for my family and I'm still able to be home and homeschool my kiddos. So that's a huge why for me. Um, financial freedom. That's a huge why for me. I don't want us to ever have to stress about finances. So figure out why you're doing this. Um, as far as your goals, decide what your goal is. If your goal is just a financial goal of 300 bucks a month, that's what would help you. Then, you know, figure out what it takes. How many customers do you need for that? How many people on your team do you need for that? And that way, you know, then, okay, you know, you need your daily, your weekly, and your monthly goals. So by the end of this month, I want to make $300 a month. So I need X number of customers. So if I need that many customers and say one out of eight people I talk to are going to do this, well, how many people do I now need to talk to weekly in order to, you know, get the one out of eight people to become my customer? Okay, and if it's weekly, then you can break that down to daily. How many people do I need to talk to daily about this? And that kind of gives you an action plan because if you don't have those daily, weekly, and monthly goals, then you're just going to be kind of guessing on what you're supposed to be doing and how many people to reach out to. Um, so for me, like I want to be enrolled by July and because that's when the cutoff is for Hawaii. That would be incredible. And so I can look at the points I have on my team now, how many points I need to go emerald, take that missing chunk right there, divide it out by how many days I have. I know how many people I have to have added to my team every single day in order to go emerald by July. So I now know, you know, well, how many people does that break down to in the few months we have left? How many does that break down to weekly? Um, you know, I know daily. And so I know what I need to be doing, what I need to be encouraging my team to do in order to focus what I'm working on. Okay. So really define your goals and then figure out the steps that it's going to take to um, get to those goals. Okay. So the next thing is being intentional about your learning. So products, products is huge. Um, you want to research the products so that you have them in your mind. The more you learn about the products, and I mean, guys, even if you've been doing this as long as I have, if you've been doing it two plus years, you never know 
everything there is to know about these products. I am constantly learning more. And so research the products, keep them fresh in your mind, um, focus on learning as much as you can about each product because it's going to it's going to build your confidence when you talk to people. I know the more I learned, the more comfortable I was if somebody asked me a question. I wasn't terrified of not knowing the answer. Um, the more comfortable I got at doing opportunity meetings and getting up in front of people and talking. Now, public speaking, I'm never going to be fully comfortable with. Many of you know that. Um, even trainings give me temp uh, stomach aches. But my confidence in my knowledge of the products is going to drive, you know, me pushing myself to do things I didn't think I could do and talking to people I didn't think I could talk to. So learn as much as you can. You can Google things. Um, you can, you know, research individual ingredients. You can read, read articles on health issues and, you know, just really just try to figure out as much as you can about it. And it's going to take time. Trust me, you're not going to know it overnight, but just make sure you're taking the steps to slowly learn. Um, the main things that our products help with are gut health, inflammation, blood sugar, and hormones. So learn as much as you can about these things as well, okay? I would focus on gut health first because most, most health issues directly link back to gut health. Um, so focus on that. Make sure you're learning about blood sugar. Um, so I've got a list here just of some things that popped in my head, like, you know, how, how, all, how are all these tied to medical issues that our friends have? How does blood sugar affect headaches? How does gut health affect headaches? How do your hormones affect headaches? Okay, learn about that stuff. Um, why does balancing your blood sugar de-stress your body? What is it about blood sugar that makes our body stressed out? What does blood sugar do to affect your hormones? Um, why, why are people who aren't diabetic still having blood sugar issues? You know, um, if you drink a, a glass of OJ, that's like more than 30 teaspoons of sugar. So you're going to have a blood sugar spike, which releases insulin, which then makes you have the sugar crash. So learn about that. Um, how does the yeast that's in your gut cause inflammation throughout your body? You know, learn about that kind of stuff. And there's great books. Like there's one book that I love that I recommend everybody reads. It's called Recaging the Beast. And the lady writes it in a real easy way to read, but it really explains how gut health is linked to all this stuff and how yeast in your gut is linked to all this stuff. Um, another great book is The Fungus Link. That's a really good one. Um, these books, you can get them on audio. You can get them on the actual book itself, but make it a point to get stuff like this. You know, find other books that are out there about this and start learning about it. Um, on YouTube, there's three ladies in particular that I listen to that really kind of helped further my knowledge. Lori Harrison, we call her our fungus queen. She knows tons of stuff about gut health and yeast, and she puts out great videos that talk about it. So just go and um, go to YouTube and type in Lori Harrison, it's L-O-R-I Harrison Plexus. And you'll pull up her YouTube channel, and then you can go to her videos and just look through it. Um, Wendy Larson, she's another ambassador. I think she's either a dietitian or a nutrition uh, nutritionist. And then Almay Darling, which she spells her name like it's Amy. It's A I M E E Darling, but she pronounces it Almay. Um, and they all have great videos that'll help you just kind of learn about this stuff. If you don't have time to read a book, you know, watch those videos. So, so that's how you can be intentional about learning about the products. Self-development um, is going to be a huge part of this as well, okay? So overcoming our fears is going to be one of the hardest things that we do. And I know some of you who have been doing this for a while and we still are struggling with stuff. Um, me too. I'm not saying some of you and not me, me as well. But self-development is a huge part of this. If you're struggling with anxiety or fear of speaking to people, that's something you know that you need to focus on working on, um, whether it's reading books on becoming a leader and how to step out of your comfort zone. That kind of stuff helps me. You know, I, the self-help books, some of them are actually pretty good. Um, if you've never worked in network marketing and you're brand new to this, get books about network marketing. There's great ones out there. Um, my favorite well, the first one I read, and it's also my favorite, is Rock Your Network Marketing Business. It's a great book. Um, there's tons out there, and I can post a link. I'm not going to list them all here. But I had somebody tell me that when I first started with this. And so I made a point to go get some, and it really, like, lit the fire under me because I went from having no clue what I'm doing 
to finally getting, you know, some tools that helped me once I applied them, I felt like it was really helping grow my business quickly. And so make sure regardless of if you've just started or, you know, you're a couple years in, make sure that you are constantly learning more about this business and about, um, you know, how to push yourself to do more. Um, and there's training videos again on YouTube. There's tons of training videos. I can post a list of all the people that I watch. I, I go to training videos almost daily and I find, I think there's like 13 or 14 people that I follow. And if I know I need to watch a training video, I go to their YouTube page and I click on a video and I watch it. So, um, you know, I really encourage you guys to make sure that you're focusing on that. And I'm almost done. I want to try to go through some of this a little bit faster because it's already 845. Um, your energy and your mood, okay? Be super intentional with what you're putting out there. Um, think about what you're showing others, okay? Are you negative all the time? Are you complaining? Um, you know, are you timid and do you apologize when you're sharing about Plexus? We need to be passionate. Um, if you love the products, be passionate about them, okay? Um, Molly Orr at a training we just recently went to, she said something that, that I loved. She said, passion has a sound. And it, I mean, it really does. People are going to hear if you truly care about them, if you are passionate about these products, or if they're a hobby to you, okay? So be passionate about it. Um, be bold. Don't apologize. I mean, you've heard just from the testimonies earlier, these products are changing lives. These products changed my life. Um, they got me out of the hospital. They got me out of pain, and I can function as a person again. And so they are really changing lives, and we can be bold about that. Um, you know, I get nervous just like everybody else when it comes to talking to people, and I, but I have to remind myself these products are changing lives. And if I meet a cashier at the store and I, our, our conversation gives an opening for it, my default is to think and think and think and I'm second guessing why I should and I shouldn't and I end up biting my tongue and I miss the opportunity and I leave. And then I'm kicking myself for not telling them about Plexus. Um, so don't do that, okay? If we're going to play out, which in my mind, I always play out the conversation to the end and it's always the negative outcome. So it, it causes me to bite my tongue and not do it. Instead, I'm going to play it out to a good end. What if they really need these products and it could change their life? Um, what if they're the next rock star on my team? What if their husband is struggling with something and me sharing it with them, you know, gets them their husband back? Like, you just never know what it is. And so I, I encourage you guys to kind of um, be bold with it and, and just, you know, share more than you think you can. Okay. And so, um, but also being educated or, is going to help you with that. If you have the products in your mind, cause you've been learning about them, that's going to help you be passionate and be bold and not ap apologize because you know, this is truth that you're sharing with them. And then time, be intentional with your time in this business. Okay. Know what you're going to do with your time so that you don't waste time. Um, that way that you know what you're doing is going to help you reach the goals that you've set for yourself. So if you're sitting down to work your business, don't scroll through Facebook or all the team pages. Okay. It's not productive. Um, I talked a little bit last week about income producing activities and the 531 plan. The 531 plan in a nutshell is reach out to five people, follow up with three, and train one. Okay, train one person on your team. You can do this daily, you can do this weekly, whatever you have time for, but this is all going to help you grow your team if you're consistent with that plan. Other people do like a 333, um, you know, the same idea, but figure out what you want to do and, and make sure you're focusing on income producing activities. Schedule your post. There's hootsuite.com, which is hoot like an owl, H O O T and then sweet S U I T E.com. That will allow you to pre-schedule your post so you can spend an hour on the weekend and set up your post for the whole week. Be intentional about your posting while you're doing that. Um, tinytorch.com. It's tiny, T-I-N-Y, and then torch, and buffer. They're all free, and they're all websites that allow you to pre-schedule your posting, and that's going to free up a lot of time, and it's going to help you be consistent, so make sure that you're doing it. Um, save things in the notes section of your phone, so if you find yourself repeatedly sending people things like instructions on how to take the um, products, or like the question, what is Plexus? You know, I get that a lot. Um, Follow-up messages for people, specific testimonials that you know are awesome. 
save them in the notes section of your phone. So then you have easy access to them to quickly send it on its way. And that's a great way to be more intentional with your time because you're not having to dig trying to find this stuff again. Um, and it's not something that like, oh, I'll send that to you later and then you forget and now this person didn't get what you said you would send to them. So save that stuff to your phone. Um, and then time block. Schedule time and set it aside that you're going to work your business, okay? So if you have 30 minutes a day in the middle of the day that you know you can work your business, put it on your calendar. If you can get up early or if you know your kids go to bed at 8 and from 8 to 9 it's free for you, put it on your calendar so that that time is set aside to work your business, okay? I cannot tell you how much that is going to help you. Um, but the biggest thing I do want to make sure to point out is if it's family time, make sure you have that protected for your family, okay? I have had to force myself to turn off my cell phone and not answer messages. It's tempting, I do it, um, but make sure that when you're with your family, you're with your family, okay? And then relationships, guys. This is relationship marketing. Be intentional with your relationships with others, okay? Make sure when you meet people, new people, that your mindset isn't plexus, plexus, plexus. And the longer you do this, the easier that gets because we're passionate about it and, you know, Plexus is on our mind a lot. Um, make sure that you're focused on the relationship and listening to them. Figure out why they would even need this. Um, some people it's going to be they desperately want to lose weight in order to feel confident about themselves. Some people, they financially really need this. And, you know, so the financial side is going to appeal to them. And some people, it's a, it's a, a health issue. Uh, you know, so that side's going to appeal to them more than the weight loss or the financial side, side would. So um, it's the three W's, okay? It's wellness, wealth, or weight. And figure out which W kind of fits them so that you know how to talk about this. Um, so, I mean, that's really it. The, you know, just kind of recap a little bit. Be more intentional with your posting. We've got to do that. That's kind of the most important. Um, be more intentional with the way that you're reaching out to people. Be more intentional with your follow-up and the things that you're sending them and your strategy behind your follow-up. Um, be really intentional about setting your goals and knowing exactly what it takes to get to those goals and to actually, you know, meet one goal to be able to move on to the next. Um, be very intentional about learning as much as you can about the products, about the business, and about kind of growing yourself and how to change and do more things that you don't think you can do. Be intentional with the mood and the energy that you're putting out there. Be passionate. Don't apologize. Don't be negative. Um, your time, make sure you're focusing on, you know, saving time where you can and applying yourself fully to the time that you do have. And then your relationships. Um, so that is what I have for you guys. I hope that this kind of helps you, I don't know, maybe refocus and re, you know, vamp kind of how you're doing things because I know some of you feel like you're spinning your wheels and you don't know what to do. Um, so I'm hoping this helps you in a way. And if you guys have questions, you know, obviously let me know.